Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Tolara, and it's Monday, so you know that means it's time for Warfronts. This week on Warfronts, it's my level 41 rogue. He is specting to Bard, and this is the Black Garden. Does this look familiar to anyone else? Because I'm pretty certain we've done this like a dozen times on Warfronts. But this will be a slightly different episode. This week, it's all about practice. That's right, not a game. Not a game, I'm talking about practice practice. That's right, practice. So here we go. What are we practicing and why are we practicing? Well, uh, last week someone astutely pointed out that I don't really use power cord that often and I let my motifs fall off. So I thought I'm going to spend a few hours practicing integrating those things into my rotation. Now, power cord, if you don't know, is a spell that bards have, which does a little bit of damage and gives you two combo points. Well, that works really well with your main channeled ability, Cadence, which, when fully channeled, gives you three combo points. See how that works out? Yeah, really nice, huh? Almost like they planned it that way. So, Power Cord is something that I should be using more often, and indeed I do use it quite frequently in PvE. For some reason, it's just not been a major part of my PvP rotation. So, I'm going to be endeavoring over the course of several games to fix that. This was probably the fourth or fifth game I played of the evening. I actually kept getting a lot of these same guys in my group. So, we sort of got this sort of group thing going where we, we started to understand each other and how we worked. And we kept playing against a lot of the same guardians, including this guy here, TJ's, who apparently has some vendetta against Evita here. Maybe he doesn't like the musical. And he is just going to town on her to the detriment of his team. And speaking of his team, they are annihilated. Yes, we have annihilated the Guardians. That must be heartbreaking. But why cry over spilt milk? You're going to come right back in a few seconds, and here they come in mass, charging down towards us. You know, that's the way things go, guys. Sometimes you just get your ass kicked. Sometimes you kick somebody's ass. An hour prior to this, we were completely annihilated in the first 30 seconds of the match, so we know how it feels, but uh, turnabout is fair play, I suppose. What you're going to notice now, if you turn your attention to the upper right-hand corner of the screen, where my buffs are, you're going to see buffs start to fall off one at a time. There they go. Bye-bye buffs. Bye-bye. Bye-bye buffs. And there they go. They're gone. Those are my motifs. And right about now, I should have been recasting those, actually, probably 30 seconds ago, well before they expired. But I'm not. I'm not recasting them. And they're still not recast. And I don't know why. And this is part of the thing that I'm trying to correct uh, with these practice sessions. Now, again, this was several games into my practice session, so you would have thought I probably had started to learn something by then, but clearly not. So we let the motifs fall off. I barely escape with my life. And uh, here we see Rambo himself, a.k.a. TJ's, going up against our whole team trying to prove something. I don't know what. Uh, but he is pushed back. Really nice comeback attempt here by the Guardians. I like this. I like that they pushed forward. Uh, they were stifled a bit as we extended our line out past the Fang. We did grab the Fang, but that was a really nice comeback because a lot of times you will see teams completely shut down off an annihilation the way that we annihilated them in the first few seconds of the match and uh, just give up. You can already see a couple of their guys have given up. They're just kind of standing on the uh, ledge up there. Nutshot, though. Nutshot. Balls to the wall. Nutshot is out there running naked and getting completely destroyed. So this match is pretty much going to go as you would expect. It's going to continue like this. Our domination is going to be uh, absolute, and we are going to claim victory in, uh, oh, about two or three more minutes, I think. Uh, so that actually allows me to talk a little bit about some of the other things that uh, happened this weekend. One in particular that happened in the Rift community. So uh, again, this match, this session of matches that I played, all about practice. If I want to give myself one final critique, I think I did a decent enough job. I walked out of it having learned to integrate power cord into my rotation very well. Motifs still need some more work, but uh, I felt like it was a pretty worthwhile uh, practice session altogether. So no complaints. I think I did pretty well. I enjoyed myself. It was nice to actually try to get back to fundamentals and, uh, and push myself forward. And uh, you're going to see me kind of leave myself out to hang here a little bit. Luckily, the bulk of the Guardian team is distracted up on the ridge, so I don't get destroyed. So that was good. Got lucky there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up, this uh, match that is. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the live stream that went on this weekend, the reveal of the new Mage Soul.
So previously on the channel, I had put the thought out there that maybe they would go with something like a tank spec for the new Mage Soul. I was kind of excited about that prospect, but what they did actually caught me completely off guard. The new Mage Soul is called the Harbinger, and it is actually going to be a melee DPS soul for the Mage. That's right, it is based on air and life magic, and it will wield magically conjured weapons and do some crazy melee combat. Uh, I would encourage you guys to head over to MMORPG's Twitch page and check out the full stream. It was a good one. There was actually a lot of good talk about Mage in general, a little bit of talk about some of the stuff that's going to be coming in the Storm Legion expansion in general, but mostly a lot of really good Mage talk. It wasn't just all about the new soul. Uh, they talked about a few interesting things that I will try to highlight as we go forward. Uh, but sticking to the Harbinger, it is going to be a DPS soul that seems to have a little bit of self-healing ability, and uh, it's also going to have some interesting stuff. It's going to have kind of like a reverse blink so you can actually uh, be in melee range and you can blink back out of melee to do some of your casting. It's also going to be sort of a viable battle mage. You know, I know a lot of friends who've played D&D, &D, uh, a lot of folks who have over time, who really liked that, like that battle mage style. You know, I'm in the thick of battle. I'm swinging a sword or an axe or a mace or whatever. And with my free hand, I'm casting spells. And that is awesome. And I want that feeling. And there are so few classes in modern MMOs that actually give you that feeling. And this is one of those classes. This is how it's designed from the ground up. It's designed as a battle mage, essentially, to give you that feeling. There are things that synergize within it to allow you to instant cast some of your longer cast time spells. It looks really, really promising. So I said it has this reverse blink, but it also has a really interesting mechanic that it works with. It's a cooldown. Uh, when you use that reverse blink, that you can actually blink backwards and continue to melee damage a character from a distance using your magical weapons. All this sort of stuff is going to come out as you watch the live stream. It's about 40 minutes. I would definitely suggest that you watch it, even if you're not interested in the mage particularly. And i got to say, I'm not even doing this on purpose, but I'm totally talking with my hands right now. I wish that I was on a camera so that you guys could see how intensely I am talking with my hands. But it's really crazy. So uh, back on topic here, uh, one of the most exciting things to me about the Harbinger is because it is a life and air based uh, soul, it will synergize with the Chloromancer. And if it does that, and it does that well, that means that we'll have a melee healer. And the last time I played a melee healer was probably one of my favorite classes or specs ever in an RPG, in an MMO, whatever. It was the Disciple of Cain in Warhammer Online. That class was so well done that it actually got me to pony up a couple months of sub fees to Mythic to continue leveling my Disciple of Cain. And I, I don't see this as being a 100% return to the Disciple of Cain, you know, that sort of a play style, but it's got shades of that. The ability to be in there uh, throwing bones, as they say, as you kids say, and, uh, you know, just in there deep, slopping it out in the trenches with the melee fighters and doing some healing, especially healing that radiates out from you. Really cool stuff. Really great. Uh, I've always loved damaged-based healers. It is why I play a bard to this day, so I'm interested to see how that actually evolves. That is one of the specs that they highlighted, along with the Pyromancer Harbinger combination and the Stormcaller Harbinger combination. So, really interesting stuff. Watch it in the live stream for all the real good info, but I will tell you a few of the highlights. Uh, one of the things that really came out that was real interesting, especially in relation to that Chloromancer uh, hybrid uh, with the Harbinger, is the idea that they're changing how Chloromancers actually get their healing from damage. Previously, of course, you got the, the damage, you got the healing. You did the damage, you got the healing that you did in damage. This caused a problem in PvP, because what that meant is with Valor reducing damage, you ended up reducing Chloromancer healing. So in PvE... Chloromancers were great, viable healers, but in PvP, much of that was lost. Of course, they're still great, they still work really well, but you never hate, you hate to ever see your numbers changing so dramatically because of a stat. 
You know, essentially Valor nullifies much of the uh, potential of the Chloromancer. So in order to actually try to fix that, uh, as Tryon often do, they do listen to the community. They are going to implement a system where it's not the damage that you do that gets translated into healing, but it's the casting time of the spell that you damage with. So longer cast spells will actually give you more healing. So that should see a change to some of the rotations and stuff. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out in PvP, because things like Opportunity in the Necromancer Tree can really have a sort of an ace-in-the-hole effect where you can cast a long casting time spell as an instant, but still get the benefit of whatever the casting time would have been. So you can instant cast a two-second spell, and even though you instant cast it, you will get the healing as if it took two seconds to cast. So there's some interesting stuff that people are going to certainly math out as we go forward, but I thought that was an interesting thing. And it was doubly interesting for me because I'm curious to see how that now affects my favorite class in Rift, the Bard. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how they uh, compensate for the same problem that the Bard suffers in uh, in the new rollout of classes and uh, if souls and uh, soul changes. Uh, there will be a lot of soul changes. Of course, you're going to go up to level 60 in Storm Legion. This means that you're going to get 10 new soul points. That is confirmed. 10 new soul points. They talk about it in the stream. And that means that your maximum is going to be 61 in one particular soul. So they've extended the trees by two tiers up, and they've extended the roots down by an appropriate amount as well. So you're going to see new abilities for every soul. You're going to see new talents for every soul. Stuff's going to get shuffled around. I mean, it is an it is a wonderful time to be a Rift player as we watch this expansion develop. And I have to say that Tryon is doing an amazing job, as they've always done, at keeping us in the loop. These live streams are just wonderful events, and the fact that they're putting them on, uh, or that they plan to put them on with regularity, is just amazing. I think these guys get it. Uh, these are the guys who understand how to relate to their players. I love the take that they have on the pay subscription model, you know, with, which is to say they look at us as paying customers who expect something for their money. Not just I am getting the maintenance of the game, I'm getting, getting continued access to the game, but I'm getting real new content. And if you figure, what has this game been around? 16, 18 months with nine major content patches, you're talking about every other month they're dropping content on us on average. That's amazing. When you think of that WoW hasn't had a content patch in eight, nine months, something like that, it's crazy. By the time Mists come out, it's going to be almost a year since any new content has been released. And yeah, I get that they're in expansion mode, and I wouldn't necessarily expect Tryon to put out a lot of content between now and uh, Storm Legion, but I think it's amazing what they've done uh, with taking the model that Blizzard popularized of content patches sort of being a, uh, a, a wink and a nod kind of thing, like, yeah, you're paying us, really we're using a lot of that money to pay the staff and keep the servers going, but here's some stuff for you. Here's a new raid, here's some new uh, abilities, here's a class revamp, whatever. So really great, and, and just still loving Tryon as a developer. Been playing the End of Nations beta a little bit, uh, which is unfortunately still indie to indie age, so I haven't been able to do any videos on it on my other channel. Uh, but we're just really excited. It's an exciting time to be a Rift player, and an exciting time uh, to be a fan of Tryon. You know, they're bringing, uh, what is it, uh, Warface, uh, Cry, uh, the Cry Engine uh, game, uh, what the hell is it? It's a Russian game that uh, Crytek is making. Uh, it's a, f a free to play. Uh, it is already over in Russia. I'm like trying to Google it at the same time as I'm talking, but that's just stupid. Uh, so the, anyway, they're going to be the American distributor for that uh, free to play FPS, which I've heard a lot of really good things about. We'll see how it shakes out. Uh, free to play FPSs can be hit or miss, but we'll see what happens. And uh, with Defiance on the uh, on the docket as well, it's a really good time to be uh, to be a follower of Tryon, to be a fan of theirs, to be. Uh, to be playing their games. I mean, it, it looks like a really promising future ahead for them. So uh, check out the live stream. There's a lot of good info in there. And uh, they they end the live stream with uh, with the mind blow. Uh, they do say that it's cool down. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. Uh, I would say go and watch it. Uh, but they do say that it's a cool down. They do say that mages will have it. Harbingers will have it. 
Uh, so I don't know if they were just joshing, but I'm sure if you watched it or if you read any Rift content regularly, you already know what it is. Uh, but it's kind of mind blowing. So uh, check it out. Check out the live stream. Link in the b uh, description below. Uh, let me let me know what you guys think. If you want to see more Storm Legion coverage, I, obviously that's going to happen. Uh, but it may tend to preempt. Warfronts, because right now this is kind of the time I have for making Rift videos. One video a week. This is what I've got the ability to do. And uh, if, if it's Warfronts or Storm Legion coverage, and you guys want to prefer Storm Le Legion coverage, great. But uh, a lot of the Storm Legion stuff is out there. It's out there for you to find and for uh, the world to consume. I'm not in any position to get any exclusive information or anything like that. So, you know, I'm not in the alpha uh, or anything like that, and I don't expect to be. So, you know, much of the information I'd be giving you would be rehashed or opinions. Uh, but just let me know what you think. I, I'm going to continue with Warfronts. I, I do have to say, I have a little bit of concern about Warfronts. I, I, I could see the series coming to an end uh, because I'm running out of stuff to do in it. I am sure that Storm Legion will probably bring a resurgence for me, and it'll bring new things to learn, new skills, new specs, new interactions. You know, that'll be great. That'll be wonderful. Uh, but, you know, things are, are, are moving in a certain direction with the show where it feels like a by-the-numbers kind of thing. Like, I get up, I play four or five games, and I cut the best one into a video, and that's what I do, and that's it. And I really would like to, to, to have the show feel a little more spontaneous, a little more interesting, the way it used to back in the first, say, you know, 30, 40 episodes. So we'll see what happens. You know, I do expect things to evolve, but there's going to be a lot of PvE to do. There's going to be a lot of PvE stuff in Storm Legion. I'm excited about that. And I want to try to cover that. So, uh, you know, I'll be in a kind of a conundrum going forward, but we'll figure it out. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. Go watch that live stream. And until next time, take it easy.